Well, this, of course, is the Supermarine Spitfire, and there's probably no other aircraft that represents 100 years of RAF history than this one. And this is a very special model. This is the Imperial War Museum Duxford's Mark I Spitfire, operated over Dunkirk in 1940, and it's the only one of their aircraft that regularly flies still at air shows all around the country. It is a wonderful example of the first mark. And of course, the amazing thing about the Spitfire was that in 1940, at the time of the Battle of Britain, the time of Dunkirk, it was very much at the start of its development cycle and actually went on to make 24 different marks powered by increasingly powerful Merlin engines and later the Rolls-Royce Griffin engine as well, flew all around the world throughout the whole of the Second World War and beyond into the 1950s. It's absolutely deified um, in aviation folklore and why wouldn't it be? It's incredible. One of the most famous features of the Spitfire, and particularly you can see on this wonderful IWM Duxford model, is of course the elliptical wing. And it is a myth that the Spitfire was largely designed by R.J. Mitchell. It wasn't. He was busy in trying to design a 300 mile an hour heavy bomber at the time and was suffering from cancer and sadly died in 1937. So most of the design work was actually um, created by other parts of the team and the famous wings are a responsibility of Beverly Shenstone and Al Faddy and the rest of it largely by Joe Smith who actually took over from uh, RJ Mitchell as chief designer at Supermarine and in actual fact had um, the early requirement being for cannons as well as machine guns this wing would never ever have been designed because as you can see it's incredibly thin uh, and so there wasn't room to put the cannons which you needed, which were much punchier, carried a much bigger weight in terms of firepower later on. You couldn't fit them in the wing. So what they came up with, and this was Joe Smith's idea, was a little teardrop, a bit like this, but a bit bigger on the wings of the Mark V upwards. Uh, and that was how you could actually adopt the cannon. But had that been a requirement right at the beginning, they'd have never designed a wing like that. So it's one of the most amazing stories about the design of this incredible aircraft. I mean, it is just a thing of wonder, isn't it? I mean, all those feline lines and uh, wonderful curves. It's no wonder that this is the most famous plane the RAF has ever flown and is still loved the world over.